Who's excited? Okay. I don't know. Coming out of impartation, guys, I have seen some amazing, amazing things happen. How about you? No? Or a couple of you? How many of you haven't been here for impartation? I'm just saying I'm super fired up with everything that I've got to witness. And tonight is not an exception. As we're coming out of impartation, this is like the greatest movement that can take place tonight is to have people giving their lives and submitting them to Christ. Come on, how many of you be excited for them? Well, I'm Chris. Um, I know I'm not here a lot. I, I'm the campus pastor for our Pomona campus. And Praise the Lord. I know Pomona, they get rowdy. Thank you, guys. But it, it is an honor to be up here tonight. Give it up for Pastor Marco, guys. This, every, everything that the church is doing right now, when he talks about growth, I don't know if you know how much this man is investing into us. Can we give it up for him one more time? And remember, this is for us, but it would be a shame if we didn't take advantage of it. Every single bit of it. Jump in. Uh, talking, I'm going to talk about baptism just very quickly before we get to the testimonies because I just want you to know my heart really quick. Baptism for me is literally where my life changed. I know a lot of you know my testimony, but I, I have to tell you this. If, if I were to pinpoint the exact moment that my life changed, it was in the water. And I'm not kidding. My wife could tell you. I've, I've, done, I've literally done thousands of baptisms here with this ministry. And, and I've seen miracles take place in the water. And I can't get into all that right now or else we'd be here for a long time. I've seen the Holy Spirit hit people like a flood. They come up and they have just been set free. That didn't happen to me. <laughs> but this is what happened. There was a still small voice in the back of my mind and I didn't know it was God. And it said, I am for real. Just that simple. Going from drug addiction to alcoholism, to womanizing, to gangs, to, to violence, to all of the things that I was doing. It took a small voice in the back of my mind to say, this is for real. I think it's exciting to me because I was there. I was a part of it. But there's going to be lives that are going to be transformed in this water today. Maybe there's even doubt in that water today. But we're believing that there's going to be transformation that is going to take place tonight. And remember, it's not just for them. It's for their generations to come. So with that being said... I want you to, to, to just look around and see the excitement that's taking place tonight. And I want you to understand something, that this doesn't just come by accident. You may say, why is this happening? Why? I feel like something's just electrifying in the ministry. I just came back from Arizona. Oh, my goodness. Pastor Robert and the team out there are doing an incredible job. It is electrifying to see what's taking place. But why is this happening right now in the way that it's happening? It's because we're being faithful with the instruction that God has given us. Right? And I want you to know this, and I'm going to get into where I'm leading up to. Look at this in Matthew 25, 23. He says, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with the little I will set you over much. I'm telling you right now, family, what I've seen in these last years, I want you to look around. You can say, man, this is a big auditorium. This is amazing what God is doing. This is the little. We have been faithful with this. God is expanding the territory. He is widening the tents in this ministry like we've never seen before. And this is just the beginning. Oh, don't get me. I'm getting fired up. 
I lost my voice in Arizona. Praise the Lord. So what is baptism? I'm just going to run it down for those of you that may not know. And this is really a recap of, of, of what's being taught in the Holy Warriors, but I want you to understand something. Baptism takes place after we have put our faith in Jesus Christ. It comes after. How many say after? Okay. I don't want you to get it mixed up. I'm going to go in the water because it looks refreshing. Thank you, brother. <laughs> it looks really refreshing, right? But it's only after placing our faith in him that we do this. So number one, baptism is an act of obedience. In case you didn't know, now you know. Once a person truly believes, they follow instruction. I want you to, I want you to hear this. After a person truly believes, they will follow instruction. If I told you right now, man, I've got the, I've got the winning ticket for a lottery. It's buried in your backyard. It's yours. Go get it. You can have it. It's the winning numbers. I'll, I'll recite it, everything. What takes place next? Action. Right? You believe that it's there, so you're going to go run and you're going to do it. It, take, it, it. There's action that takes place after you believe. Right? We got it? So we're not following. I want you to get this really clear, guys. We're not following our feelings or emotions on this one. I've heard this too many times. I just, I don't, I don't feel it right now. I, I know, I know what the scripture says and I know what Jesus said. But I just don't feel it. I'll wait and I'll pray. Pray about this. Let me tell you right now, when God is speaking to you, you don't have to sit down and pray. You just do it. Here we go. Sorry, guys. I know I go hard sometimes. But we follow instruction. This is not a wait moment. God says, do you believe? Get saved. Put your faith in me. Get baptized. This is your next step. Some of us are jumping. Right? Oh, man, I'm in all this ministry. I'm doing all these great things for the kingdom. And, man, we just go back to the simple instruction. Have you been baptized? I'm not here to point fingers at anybody. But what I'm here to do is let's get in line. Let's get in order. Maybe you've been a believer for 20 years. You've been serving in ministry. Maybe you're even a, I don't know. I'm sorry. But let's get in line. It's not because I'm telling you to do it. It's not because Holy Warriors is telling you to do it. Jesus did it first. In Acts 2, 20, or 2, 38, it says this. Peter replied, each of you must repent. Say must. 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 repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. He didn't say if you feel like it. He said you must. So number two, baptism is, a, is symbolic of the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay, if you're wondering, why do we do that? Check it out. I'm going to tell you. It is being submerged, okay, or immersed in water, symbolizing. I just want you to know right now, we ain't sprinkling you. All right? You go underneath that water, eyelashes floating off, your hair going all crazy, right? And all the works, all the makeup running down your face, take you all the way under. It symbolizes the death, which is turning away from your old life. And the burial, that's the going under the water. And the raising up, the resurrection for our new life with Christ. In Romans 6, 4, it says, For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. I put an emphasis on power. There was absolutely no way that I could live this life. 
when me and my wife came, I just dove in, right? And I just, I, I did what the Bible said. Just like a child, I didn't know what to do. I didn't even know, really know how to read the Bible. In fact, Pastor Marco has said, get your Bible, read a Bible, highlight your Bible, do this, do this, do this, what you do. Guess what I did? Step-by-step step instruction. You should see my first Bible. I, he never said, like, highlight certain parts. I highlighted every single word that I read. I still got the Bible. I'm not kidding you. But what I did was I didn't, I want you to understand something. When the instructions are clear, it's for a reason. Some of us, like I said, we start taking leaps and bounds and, oh, my goodness, and we, we, we miss the step. And he says, slow down, son. There's a reason, or daughter, there's a reason why I have you doing this. Are you following me? There's power in it. Number three, baptism is a public declaration. It is a public declaration that we have made, with, made Christ the Lord of our lives and have placed him alone, uh, placed our faith in him alone for salvation. It also means to plunge in to throw oneself into enthusiastically and without hesitation. There's some people over here today. I talked to a couple of them. They didn't hesitate. They did not wait. They said, okay, I know I'm supposed to be baptized. Let's go get baptized. I don't care how cold that water is. Let's go. Right? We need to come into a place where we're enthusiastic about doing what God is asking us to do. So baptism represents an all-in commitment. I looked up the word all-in, or the, the phrase all-in. It is completely committed to. Completely. Not 50-50. Not 60-40. Right? Not even 99-1. It is being completely sold out. For some of you, that's like, oh, man, that sounds like a lot. What Jesus did on the cross was a lot. Ouch. So what are we saying? I'm all in and I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed to say that, guess what? Jesus saved my life. That's what we're doing here today. These men and women that are getting in there are saying, I'm not ashamed. I don't care who sees it. I know for my baptism, I invited some worldly people. I'm not ashamed. So those are my three points, but I want to, I've got this extra. And if you're taking notes, it's the power in obedience. There's power in obedience. And with the two minutes that I have left, we're going to run through this. Following God's instructions can bring change in your life when nothing else could. It is not enough to just say that I know what to do. We have to apply it. In James 1.22 it says, but don't just listen to God's word. You must, be, you must do it. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. I didn't begin to change. I didn't have the power to change until I was filled with the Holy Spirit. That moment that I came out of the baptismal, I was filled with the Holy Spirit and it gave me the power to walk out this life. Without it, you're working on your own power. I'm gonna leave off with this scripture in Matthew 313, 17. And it says this, when Jesus went to Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John, but John tried to talk him out of it. I am the one that needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? Verse 15. But Jesus said, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. You caught that, right? All that God requires. Jesus himself, we think, you don't need to be baptized, you're sinless. Why do you think he did it? Because there was going to be a group of people that said, Jesus didn't do it. I don't have to do it, right? But he did it to set the example. 
says this, so John agreed to baptize him. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened, and, the, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and setting on him. And a voice from heaven said this, this is my dearly, my be dearly beloved son and who brings me great joy. I want you to see the significance in what took place at this baptism. Nowhere else in scripture except in creation does it show at the same time that Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit are all spoken about in the same verse. And it was at Jesus' baptism. When Jesus said, I will walk in obedience to what the Father said, the Father's voice spoke. The Holy Spirit rested upon him. I want you to understand something. That when we walk in obedience to God's word, there is power that comes with it. God himself is backing us. Amen? So right now, this moment, and we're going to pass it over to Christian. I want, this is a, a day of celebration for those that are, re that are committing their lives to Christ.